AutoTrader.com College Football Today is sponsored by AutoTrader.com. Now find brands making new cars and special offers on AutoTrader.com. DirecTV. Switch now and get a whole home DVR upgrade for free. And by Russell Athletic, who reminds you that together we are. Gentlemen, let's get a quick prediction on the game from both of you. Well, I think it's going to come down to defensive turnovers because that I think Navy has the advantage here, and I think if that trend plays out, this game will end just like the first one began in 1890 mm -hmm. with the Navy win. Well, Army's had a tough go of it on the road, uh, but they are the nation's number one team in terms of rushing yardage. I like their third quarterback, Angel Santiago. I think he's going to play a factor in the outcome of this game. Go Army. All right. That's it for now. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wilson are standing by after this message and a word from your local station with the 112th Army-Navy game. For the 112th time, Army is playing Navy in football. For the first time, the game will be contested in the nation's capital, and it comes complete with all the pageantry we associate with this great rivalry. And among the 82,000 in attendance, the President Barack Obama and the Vice President Joseph Biden. Welcome to Army-Navy, America's game presented by USAA. This is the Home Depot College Football on CBS Sports. Today, the 112th renewal of Army versus Navy. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. We welcome you to the nation's capital. For the first time in nine years, there's no bowl game for either team. They come in with both with losing records, but Gary, this game still has real relevance. Oh, it really does. You know, we've our third year watching these uh, young men grow into soldiers. We've kind of gotten accustomed to it. I think these two teams are evenly matched this year. I look for a great game. Well, they both run the option, and that means we're going to focus on the quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to. When you're running this type of offense, you depend on your guy to make it go. For Army, it's Trent Steelman. It's his third year as the starting quarterback in this game. He sets the tempo with his legs. He actually is the physical force for this Army team that leads the nation in rushing. Now, Chris Proctor's had some big shoes to fill. Ricky Dobbs ran this offense for Navy. But, you know, his coach has said about Chris Parker, if the other 21 guys would have had as good a year as Chris, we'd have been fine. Chris has done very well at quarterback. Great day, full house. Let's go to the public address announcer, Mark Kessler, for the coin toss. In commemoration of the Reagan centennial and in partnership with the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation, we honor President Reagan in today's coin toss with a commemorative Reagan centennial coin. The Reagan centennial national football coin toss celebrates the values that football teaches such as leadership teamwork and drive which ronald reagan embraced and exemplified throughout his life ladies and gentlemen please turn your attention to midfield for the coin toss and welcome the president of the united states the honorable barack obama Joining the president is the vice president, the Honorable Joe Biden, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary Leon Panetta, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, United States Army, along with the team captains from Army and Navy. Joining them on the field from the Department of the Army are the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable John McHugh, the Army Chief of Staff, General Raymond Odierno and the United States Military well, Academy Superintendent, uh, Lieutenant Honor, General David Presenting to you President Barack Obama, who will be flipping the coin today, this classic football game. The coin is a commemorative silver dollar honoring President Reagan. His impression will be heads. The presidential seal will be tails. Army. You're the visiting team today. You have the privilege to make the call. Tails. You're calling tails. Tails is the call. President Obama, tails is the call. 
Would you do us the honor and flip the coin and let it hit the ground? Tails is the call. It is Tails. Army has selected to receive. Navy, you will kick. Which end of the field would you kick from? Your backs this way, please. Army, you will defend this goal. Army won the toss, well received. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Captains. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck. And first on the field, the midshipmen of the Naval Academy, four and seven. They've won nine in a row against Army. Right behind them from West Point and the U.S. Military Academy, the Black Knights. Well, they had a march on about two hours ago, and now the football team is going to march on and then speed it up. Army, Navy for the 112th time. The Home Depot College Football on CBS, Army, Navy, America's Game presented by USAA is sponsored by USAA. The United States Army. K Jewelers. And by LG. At Annapolis and West Point, the mission to train leaders of character is never done. Their uniforms unite them as a single brotherhood. And at the same time, their uniforms clash. And nowhere is the rivalry more passionate than on the football field. 111 times the Black Knights and the midshipmen have stood guard against each other across the gridiron. are filled with honor students, valedictorians, and varsity team captains. The Army-Navy game still represents all that is great about football and the nation both academies serve. leadership and integrity. This is truly a game of honor. War heroes have graced this stage, as have five Heisman Trophy winners. Between them, the teams have won four national championships, and 10 standing United States presidents have watched them play. square off once a year for bragging rights that last a lifetime. An intense family feud summed up in two words. Army. Navy. And so we are set for the Army-Navy encounter. The Army Black Knights, 3-8 and eight for the year. The Navy Midshipmen, 4-7. and seven. They lost five of those games by a total of 11 points. Moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Ken Niamatololo. 
Coach, I just saw you a moment ago with the president. What did he say to you? Uh, gave me a little, uh, no, a little bit of shocker hanging in there, but uh, it's great to talk to him. Uh, I've been in a lot of these. This one's different, though. I could just a different era about this game. Uh, hopefully our emotions are in check, but there's not too many events that the president and the vice president are at. Thanks a lot. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. And, of course, Ken Niamatololo, a native of Hawaii, and traditionally wears a lay during this game, and he's got one on today. They first met in 1890, and Navy has won nine in a row. It is really a terrific day. We've got clear skies, 46 degrees, a slight breeze out of the north, northwest, and a capacity crowd. John Teague will kick off number 45. Scott Williams and Larry Dixon are the two deep men, and this will be Scott Williams. Nice tackle at the 25. They might mark this at the 26. And the stop made by number 15, Gary Myers. And let's introduce you now to the uh, quarterback of Army, the junior Trent Steelman out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. He had a 32-game starting streak disrupted this year with an injury and uh, might be a little hampered, but we're told he's full go. And on first down, the goal to the left side, that's Jared Hassan, who a year ago had uh, a 1,000-yard season. And now the Army offense presented by Jeep. Brad Kelly, Allen, Powis, Vellante, and McDermott up front. And uh, Barr, Maples is the leading ground gainer on the team, and Hassan was a late ad. And the fullback is number 26, Larry Dixon. Fullback, and that's a first down. Larry Dixon, a freshman out of Bremerton, Washington, just across uh, the sound in Seattle. Jabari Tawani is the leader of the defense. Marks, Jones, the other three, two up front. Shannon King, Mike Warwick, and French are the linebackers. And the secondary, Gaines, Bush, Ferguson, and Sperry. Gaines and Ferguson are both freshmen. Toss, Hassan, going left. Nothing doing this time. Tackle made by Matt Warwick, number 51. This first time that Hassan and Dixon have been in the same backfield together. Hassan usually plays fullback, but he's lined up as halfback in the triple option. And handling the pitch would be the one thing I think he needs to be aware of. It's going to be second down and 10. That's what it gives you, though, right there. Right. Hassan on the power counter. You got two big physical backs in the game now, Dixon and Hassan. And remember, Trent Steelman is their next physical back. Send the fullback one way, and then you can run Hassan or Maples, their other gifted speed back. Third down three on the opening drive. Malcolm Brown has come on the field now, number 23. Toss right. Maples has the first down plus. Matt Warwick makes the tackle, number 51. This offensive line has led this Army team to be the best rushing team in the country. And when you think they're going to run the option, this time they come to the outside with the sweep, and that time Malcolm Brown, number 23, you just saw the end of it, get the good block on that speed sweep. Well, with 140 yards in the ground today, Army will surpass 4,000 yards for the season. Hassan this time contact made at the line of scrimmage by Jared Marks, number 91. That's exactly who made it inside the nose tackle for Navy. You remember last year, the nose tackles in this defense have to make plays against those fullbacks. He beat his guy and made the play. Second down, nine. Opening drive of the game. Stephen Fraser, they will use a few running backs. Will Army. And now Stephen Fraser, number 27, is in the backfield. Steelman in trouble, throws it deep right, and heaves it into the Navy bench. 
The nearest receiver was David Brooks, number 13. Third down. Well, we've seen Steelman now for three years, haven't we, Vern? Right. I mean, in, when he left high school, he was 165 pounds. Today, he's 205 pounds. Right. And when we first met him, Gary, you remember, he wasn't really so sure. No, no, no. He's a soldier now. Yes, he is. <laughs> Absolutely. Third down nine. Option left side. Steelman keeps. Stiff arm. It'll be fourth down. Nice job then by Jared Shannon, number 10. And uh, the first fourth down in the opening moments of the game here. And not quite sure what Army will do here. What will Rich yeah. Ellison do? Go four down territory? Or punt the ball. You would assume a punt this early in the game. And it will be Chris Bolt who comes on. Matt Aiken, number 85, is deep. He's perched at the uh, 10 yard line. Fair catch called and taken at the 18. And a flag is down, so uh, hold everything. Yeah, I'm sure they would decline that. That's that's pretty good field position, and they could get a lot worse. Mm -hmm. okay. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield are kicking team. The penalty is five yards. It'll be added to the end of the run. First down. This is an ACC officiating crew. They uh, are charged with the responsibility of officiating all Army and maybe home games throughout the year. So we are underway in the nation's capital. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great moments in the Army-Navy rivalry. From our nation's capital, go Army, be Navy! The drought is over. Surgeon with the ball stripped away by Wyatt Middleton. Five! Touchdown! I believe that we will win! I believe that we will win! I believe that we will win! Go, Army! You need me, boys! Stop and give me 20, you wussies! <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing about this rivalry is there's no emotion involved, ever. And so the Naval Academy gets the ball for the first time. They've got it at their own 23-yard line, and Chris Proctor is the quarterback, the senior. First down, 10. And like the Army, they'll run the option, and Proctor will keep it and go to the right. And uh, let's introduce you to the senior quarterback from Big Bear City, California, his coach, Neil Matalolo, said yesterday he reminds him of a skateboarder in his demeanor. And I think what uh, Coach Neil Matalolo meant <laughs> is that he's fearless. Yep. Now Parker replaced Ricky Dobbs, of course, who is uh, on the sidelines today. Ricky awaiting assignment to uh, his shift, which will occur on January 11th down in Norfolk. Second down six. It'll be third and one, and now let's uh, introduce you to the Navy offense. Vickers, Cabral, DeMille, John Dowd, who was a finalist for the Campbell Trophy in New York City on Tuesday night, presented by the National Football Foundation. Turner, Teach, Gigi Green, Santiago, the leading runner, and Matt Aiken, the wide receiver. I got a feeling, Vern, that's the first thing John Dowd has ever lost in his life. I think you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, the winner was Andrew Rodriguez, who's on the field right now. And here is a first down for the Naval Academy, G.G. Green, who is the fastest of this uh, squadron of running backs for the Naval Academy. Yeah, you can see the different style. Now, Navy is a more lateral option team, finessing a little bit more to the outside, have a bit more team speed. Army wants to come between the tackles when they run the ball at you. Same offense, just a little different slant to it. Jeffrey Bacon with that tackle. First down and 10. How uh, Army freeze and look over for a play. Navy does it with quick motion to kind of try to declare the defense. 
Army's very close to the line of scrimmage with their safeties. And up the middle it comes. Alexander Teach, who is uh, destined to become a naval SEAL, Navy SEAL. A.J. Mackey, he's the largest of the defensive line, and he checks in at only 260. This is not a massive defense for either uh, Army or Navy. Watts, Bacon, and there is the winner of the Campbell Trophy, Rodriguez. And what a moment that was uh, when he was honored on Tuesday night in New York City. Second down, six. And another Navy first down. He put the ball on the floor, but he's called down, I down think. Down by Aaron. contact, yeah. yes. Yep. See, the tough part about playing the option is you're out there at the defensive end spot. You're right here and saying, all right, I'm going to take on the quarterback, and then all of a sudden, the back comes out and blocks you. You're standing there waiting for the quarterback. The next thing you know, the quarterback's going to the outside. Now, will this be reviewed? No, his elbow was down. And so a first down 10. Proctor keeps it and pays a bit of a price. Holt Zalneritis made the tackle. Well, these are two of the outstanding rushing teams in the country. Army averaging 351. Uh, Air Force, of course, 320. Georgia Tech coached by former Navy coach Paul Johnson at 317. And then Nia Matalolo, he yeah. and Rich Ellerson both learn. Curtis is the one game they don't care which way the wind's blowing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, one of the earlier wins by Navy this year, they didn't complete a pass, didn't attempt one. Second down. There we go. Or not. Proctor across midfield. And down at the 45. And that, and that was not called the quarterback draw either, though. That was just good coverage by that Army defensive backfield. Andrew Rodriguez given credit for half the time. When you talk to Ivan Jasper, the coordinator, you see the secondary, how close they are. They're playing run first, but no one really open across the board there. And Proctor did the right thing. Third down. Short of the first down, it's a fourth and one. It's pretty close, isn't it? You think? Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be pretty close. All right. Stephen Erzinger, one of the captains, and Thomas Holloway. We might have to get the vice president to be the tiebreaker between me and you on this one. <laughs> uh, it's pretty close. All right. I'm saying he's short, Gary. Really? Okay. Okay. We've got a tremendous booth for this game, though, don't oh, we, Vern? I mean, we're, this goodness. is like doing a, you know, a, back in the high school. Oh, you won. Oh. And you expected anything <laughs> less. <laughs> this is like you and, next week, you and Kellogg are going to be doing it just like this. Yeah, that's from right. This side, yeah, huh? that's an early promo for next week's <laughs> basketball. As uh, Clark and I get to work the Louisville-Memphis game next week. Now then. Well, Kenny has a taken what Paul Johnson built here with this Navy offense and built on it. He he has expanded it. He is outstanding coordinator Ivan Jasper who's been with them for years once as a quarterback in this offense just like Ken was and now running the same offense that Paul Johnson installed here for the Naval Academy. Well they have called time and it comes with six minutes and 50 seconds to go. Opening drive for the Naval Academy. We have no score. Scoreless in Washington, 650 to go in the opening quarter. And a real privilege for all of us to welcome the President of the United States, Barack Obama. It's a pleasure to see you again. Great to see you, Vern. <laughs> Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the first time this game has been played in in Washington, D.C. There seems to be a real resonance about having it here, though. Well, look, we're, we're close to uh, the Pentagon. A lot of <laughs> these guys are going to end up serving uh, at some point or another here in Washington, passing through, uh, getting their orders. 
but uh, what incredible excitement. You can see uh, how excited the, the midshipmen and the cadets are, but also uh, just having it here has generated a, a great deal of attention for the community. Well, it's great to have you with us, and he's going to stay and add a little commentary. We know he can do basketball, but we're going to give, right. <laughs> give you a football test now. And it's fourth down for the uh, Naval Academy. Fourth and less than a yard. Proctor quickly quarterback sneak yeah. and that's a first down for Navy they have won the last nine Gary take us through this well, yeah Mr. President as we watch the fourth and one we know you're a Chicago Bear fan college football who do you follow it through your career you know the truth is that uh, when I was in Chicago I used to root for Illinois oh yeah uh, but uh, not now that I'm in Washington, I got to admit, most Saturdays I'm working. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Makes but, sense. Uh, Here's the handoff on the right side. And it goes to Alexander Teach, uh, who kind of exemplifies the future for these young men. He's, uh, Mr. President, an outstanding young man who's chosen to go the SEAL route. How admirable is well, that? Well, listen, th these guys, uh, yeah, I got a chance to see him uh, either at West Point or Annapolis. And, uh, do their graduations. You talk to them, they are remarkable. Yeah. They're smart, dedicated, tough, uh, love their country, do an incredible job. There's Proctor going around the side and gets inside the 20, and uh, he's at the 19 yard line. And that's what gives this game such resonance because what, what we are reminded of is as important as sports are, these guys are going to be in life or death situations voluntarily yeah. protecting our country. They're going to be on the same team. Uh, and you know it, it, it constantly makes you grateful for uh, the, being here in America and uh, these incredible young people. They are the best that we have to offer. Second down. Proctor leading rusher. Here's the toss and they come up. Looks like another first down for the Naval Academy as they continue uh, this drive inside the 15 yard line. Well Mr. President we did the SEC all year and we noticed something in one of our games. You might be able to help us. Auburn had this play here that they flashed. Do you have any idea what that play might be right there for you? What's your favorite play? Do you have any idea? Well I, I've got to say that uh, Auburn came last year to the White House. That's to, right. To, right, uh, right. You know, to can be congratulated for having won the <laughs> national championship and uh, but they didn't they didn't tell me no, uh, that what they the had play, play was. <laughs> I've got a suggestion that it was either something in the middle or slightly to the left. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Looks like a fun. And it was turnovers last year by Ricky Dobbs that kept Army in the football game. Marching down the field and all of a sudden when you're running this type of offense you have to be so disciplined between the quarterback and the fullback. And that time when Proctor took the football out of the fullback, he got hit just as he released it. Watch, he's got it. He doesn't have control, but he gets punched out from inside. Who did you see who got it, Vern? Jacob Droves forced it. There he is, number 50. And then Nate Combs, number 22, recovered. Yeah, Droz is the guy that made the play off the, yeah, now Army has that unique defense. They kind of come at you from all different angles. They gamble on defense and got the turnover there needed. And how ironic is that for Army? Because early turnovers really cost this Army team in the season. And Teach looks a bit shaken up, doesn't he? Yeah, Alex Teach was uh, injured on the play, and it goes to Army. So this is an Army team that has fumbled and lost 19 fumbles this year. Yeah. But the first turnover Ooh, goes to We got to some hitting now. Did you ever play football? You know, I played football in ninth grade, and then uh, I realized that I was built more for basketball. <laughs> 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 you know, I was a big kid in eighth grade, and then in ninth grade, suddenly everybody else started yeah, there you go. getting a little heavier than me. On second down, steel and rolling out, being chased. And knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 26 yard line. What an incredible rivalry, though. Uh, isn't it? 112 years. And, and everybody uh, who is rooting for Army and Navy, they, they understand the significance of these games. They, they build up to it all year long. It, it's amazing being around these men. It's, it's humbling, in fact, when you're around it, isn't Absolutely. it? Third down and three. And we are ever cognizant that this game is being carried around the world on uh, Armed Forces Radio and Television Network. So great to have all of our young men and women in uh -oh. oh, another one. Yeah. That's what we were talking about, yes. Gary. 
That's the 20th fumble that they've lost this year. It's been the story of their season. Well, one of the things that people think is the wishbone offense is a safe offense. Really, the contrary. You're doing a lot of ball handling in really close confines. And when you're trying to make those passes, it's, you know, in basketball, it's like those little passes of the paint. Those are the hardest ones to catch. And right there, you can see the relationship between the quarterback and the running back was too close. And that time, it was just bobbled and put on the ground. And Raymond Maples did not handle that pitch. And it was the senior, Jabari Tawani, who made the recovery, young man from Brentwood Academy in Nashville. And here's Navy with a marvelous opportunity again to punch it in. You know, Aaron Santiago, Mr. President, is from the island of Hawaii. He's a smaller than you and very slight, but he is one of their main players. Well, it's interesting. Uh, some of you may remember my uh, my aide, my body guy, yes, uh, Reggie yes, Love. Who of played course. At, he played at Duke and uh, was all ACC. And Duke played Navy a couple of times. And he said, Nobody pound for pound right. was tougher right. than Navy. I mean, for Division One schools, you know, these guys uh, aren't as big as some some of the folks, but uh, but they are tough. Santiago, here's Parker around the end, and it'll be third down. Uh, Santiago listed at 5'8", 167. Yeah. Speaking of tough, watch uh, with Chris Proctor had to take all season running this wishbone offense. I was uh, unfortunate enough, I mean fortunate enough to run this off offense in college. And, and it is a tough one because you face guys like that that are ready to give you a physical pounding every time. Third down. Oh, there's an appropriate signature to the, to the game. Grass stuck in the helmet. Here we go. Sweep right. This is Santiago. Yeah, there he is. In fact, he's one of the main players, Mr. President. When they lost him, that really hurt the Navy offense all year. He's one of their key football players on the team. Shortstop. He said he wanted to be a shortstop, right? He's mm -hmm. not a right. shortstop. No. He's a slot back in the Navy. Well, you've got some great football players yes. coming out of Hawaii. And that's one of the things that both these squads have in common. Uh, Rich Ellerson, the Army coach, was the coordinator at Hawaii when Ken Niamatololo was the quarterback. And uh, that'll make you proud to see the Hawaiian oh, absolutely. contribution of these academies. Well, you know, the uh, uh, out of my high school, uh, mostly Tatupu played. Yep. Uh, Well-known fullback. And then uh, Mark Tuine, who, who played uh, defensive tackle for and Dallas. The Cowboys, and, sure. So uh, there's a strong tradition of guys coming out. Some big guys. Now we know you have to be 50 50 in this game but we understand and these college football people figure this out way back your grandfather marched with Pat right so you got to be careful here believe me Vern and I <laughs> have been there you catch it if they even sense that you are leaning one way you know I, I've got to be very careful but it is true my, my grandfather served uh, in, in Patton's army and uh, he actually is uh, uh, is laid to rest in uh, the uh, National Memorial in Honolulu and so again it's it's a reminder of the, at these games uh, as much fun as these things are right. you know, part of what we celebrate is, is the dedication and the sacrifice that uh, all these young men and, and young women uh, who, who are in the stands uh, are going to be making for our country day in day out. Third down now for the Naval Academy. Proctor cuts in. He's got Touchdown it. Navy. Mr. President, that was a pretty good drive you gave us right there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you got it. You're the quarterback in this. It's your job to read the tackle real quick, decide whether to give it or not, and then whether you should follow or not. And this time, Proctor, you see those quick feet. That's why Chris Proctor is so good at that. Fakes and follows almost in the same motion. Uh, John Teague for the extra point. This is. Uh... This effort has caused problems this year. Uh oh, 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 yeah. oh that's oh. his. Oh, it snuck it through. Right through. He <laughs> careened it in. Wow. He's had two blocked, but he gets this one. That's a billiard shot. <laughs> yeah, that was a little nerve wracking for the yeah, protesters. Right. Wow. It was such an honor right. to have you with yeah, us. Thank you, pleasure. Mr. President. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. President, nice. Right. Thank you very much. Have a great you holiday season. Yeah. Merry Christmas yeah. to everybody. Merry okay. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Thanks. Let's look one more time at the touchdown. Army Navy.
Ivy scores first. Seven to six. One oh six to go, first quarter. Navy takes the lead. Chris Proctor with eleven carries now, thirty nine yards and the touchdown. And there's Proctor on the headsets with the folks upstairs. Nice effort and fumble and fumble and then a carom extra point. Yeah, I, I, when you're running this offense, it's got Rich Ellerson doesn't have any hair, but he's got to be pulling it out because you depend <laughs> on those pitch relationships. You're running such a fine tune. You know, you want to use three downs to make a first down. You want to control the ball and there's the turnover and it could be the story of the season for Army this year. 20 lost fumbles. Here's the kick. Taken at the seven yard line by Scott Williams, number 10. Wow. That's right. Well, the touchdown drive began with a miscue by the Army. Here's the fumble. Maples. And then Proctor with a four yard touchdown run. Puts Navy on top, 7 nothing. My name is Chris Proctor. I'm a first class and the quarterback at the Naval Academy. After uh, graduation, I'm going to be a Naval Flight Officer. But one last mission for the Academy, go Navy and beat Army. And it was Proctor, of course, who's on the headset, who scored the touchdown from four yards out. First down, 10. Army. This is Larry Dixon, the freshman fullback. And Proctor might be slightly injured. Let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, on the sideline, Navy athletic trainers were working on Proctor's fingers, trying to stop the bleeding. It actually occurred during that Navy fumble, but because the Army fumbled and they recovered so quickly, they didn't have enough time to actually stop the bleeding for Proctor, but he seems to be fine, guys. Here's Steelman around the right side and tackle made by Wes Henderson, number 99. It does look different, doesn't it? Now they're running basically the same offense. Right. But you can see the emphasis by the Army team is first angle they can cut into. The first crease they're going to look for. It. They are not trying to get wide at all. Final 11 seconds of the first quarter. This is out to the 40. It's Dixon again. Larry Dixon, the true freshman. And he started the last four games and scored a touchdown in each of those four. That's the end of the first with our score. Navy seven, Army nothing. We'll return to our nation's capital after this message and a word from your local station. To Landover, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C., but inside the Beltway. And we begin the second quarter of Army Navy. It's 7 0 Navy. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson. From our nation's capital. Around the right side is Raymond Maples, number one. And a nice run. Travez Bush, number nine, made the tackle. Ryan Shields, the offensive coordinator for Army, and Rich Ellerson's offensive coordinator, has said, you know, Gary, we're a pretty good offense, and we're really close to being a really good offense. It's been a three-year process. They're now recruiting. Oh, this is a best of play yeah, right here. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, so every, I, I don't know what happened, but it looked like Steelman went the wrong way. Everybody on the team was going left. 
French made the tackle, number 50. Now watch this. Fake, fullback goes the other way, the blocking back goes, the, the guard goes the other way. It was just not right. Ryan Powis was going that way. At a loss of three at second down 13. Here's the pitch. Oh, well, they got the angle. Got the edge. Malcolm Brown, number 23. The one thing that Army can't have is, well, turnovers, number one. Yeah. Okay, we start there. Right. The second is negative plays. That negative play by Trent Steelman right there has put his Army team in tough situation. I'll bet this time they might be thinking four down territory here, though. They're inside the 40. It's third and five. Army now looks at their cards on the sideline. They all look over. They've got a signaling system similar as you've seen around college football. And this will be stopped short of the first down. It's Larry Dixon and a flag is down. Yeah, flag down. The president did laugh when I showed him the picture of the, Yes, he did. did. Okay, yes, good. Yes, I just he to did. Make sure. No, I knew you were concentrating on the screen. <laughs> I was making sure he was comfortable. Yes, all right, good. Yeah, yeah. Number 52 <laughs> offense, 15 yards. Still third down. I'm a little nervous about that, but <laughs> <laughs> And he has taken his uh, seat in the stands. Now he'll sit with uh, the midshipmen in the first half and then transition to the uh, cadets. Steelman missed three and a half games, uh, had a high ankle sprain, suffered against Vanderbilt. And that uh, the next game he missed Fordham, Rutgers. Air Force and then Temple yeah. he started, but he was hurt two plays in. He hurt his knee two yeah. plays in. And those four games were a disaster for Army. Just the Fordham game they won. Wow. Is that that's down by contact? Yeah. Just celebrating. You know who that is? Jabari Tawani. He is. He is. Tackles for loss away from the all-time school well, record. Now he's one of them. Now he's one because Jabari number 98 is one of the great football players in all of college football. I'm telling you, he could play for any defense, Alabama or LSU included. One of the great players I've seen all year on tape. Here is the first punt of the game, and Matt Aiken, number 85, is back. Grabs it with a fair catch taken at the 20. They might give him the 21. 36-yard punt. Jabari Tawani with his first tackle for loss in this ballgame. America's Navy, a global force for good. Anchors away. Able to rescue small cats in a single bound. More powerful than an army tank. It's America's Navy, fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and another Navy win. Go Navy, beat Army! <laughs> Lest you have any doubt about uh, the production of the spot, they're called Spirit Spots, and that was produced, of course, as you saw, by the submarine force of the Navy. 7-0 here, 12.32 to go first half. Just want to talk about the challenge this Army defensive line has undersized as Vern told you they're 260 225 225 along the front I mean you cover running backs bigger than that sometimes yeah that's true first down and 10 GG Green with the carry going left well we, we, we have talked a lot about the, the proficiency of the running games here but uh, in all candor they have some defensive weaknesses and uh, so they may pile up a lot of yards today. That's true for both teams. Yeah, it, and the Navy was telling us that the way Army gambles on defense and, and attacks the running game, they believe they're going to have to hit a couple deep passes to really kind of break open this Army defensive scheme. That's a plunge over right guard by Alexander Teach. Zach Watts, number 40, makes the stop. Yeah, Zach Watts and Andrew Rodriguez, number 42, are the basic kind of bookend ends on the field. They they go three up the middle, and then number 40 and 42 kind of bracket them from the outside. Third and eight. Uh, 
Proctor. Trouble. Down at the 15. It's going to be fourth and a bunch. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Vern, we've got the ultimate Heisman watch. There they are, all five finalists right here in the studio. We're watching them now, and we'll be talking to them at halftime. Think they're anxious? You don't want to miss it. Uh, we look forward to that. That's become a tradition on this particular Saturday that Tim and Spencer, Aaron Taylor's in the studio today. And watch the, watch the honey badger. If he grabs it, he ain't going to catch him, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we all know he takes what he wants. <laughs> Not That's a great a, punt. No, not at all. That's Pablo Beltran. And the ball still uh, floating around. And it's down at the 48-yard line. The Army Navy game presented by USAA will continue after this word from your local station. Seven nothing Navy leads. Many of us were uh, present in New York City at the Waldorf Astoria for the National Football Foundation annual dinner. Andrew Rodriguez, the 2011 Campbell Award winner. Uh, deservedly so, one of 16 finalists. You see his GPA 4.14. He is the Red Lobster Scholar athlete representing Army and the Red uh, Lobster Scholar athlete representing the Naval Academy, John Dowd, who also was a finalist. And during the break, there was a presentation on the field. To the left in the back, General David Rodriguez and his wife, Jenny. And then in the background there, Tom and Kathy Dowd the proud, proud parents of John Dow. What an honor that is to be awarded the finalists. They do have a scholarship involved. And then Andrew Rodriguez, a deserving winner. Well, and, and Vern, you know, another turnover here? It is another turnover drive. Wow. Start this drive on the 50-yard line. Remember, this offense for Army is looking for a way to control the football. Was it Tawani again, number 98? Watch him from the top of the screen, causes the fumble. He does. Slams the ball with his right hand and takes it right away from Jared Hassan, number seven. And that's 21 fumbles lost for the year. Oh, yeah, it just kills you. Oh. It just kills you when you have a ball control. How about, I'll tell you, Jabari Tawani is a really interesting football player. When he comes back out again, I want to talk about what his future may be besides the military. Proctor chased out of the pocket, tucks it. He's got two blockers in front, one of whom gets a sensational block. And Proctor's flying down the sidelines before he's knocked out of bounds. I think it was Brandon Turner. It was Brandon Turner, wow. exactly who it was. Now, remember, when you play wide receiver for these two schools, you better be able to block. And Brandon Turner got a huge one downfield. You know, Brandon Turner, though, is 6'4", 200. He's one of the biggest guys on the field. Right. And he showed it on that one. Just cleared a path. That was a called pass play again, and it turned into a breaking play for Navy. 31 yards on that play, and here's G.G. Green to the 20 yard line. I was just going to say uh, Vern was a uh, very modest. He also was honored at that Hall of Fame banquet for honored for contributions to college football and Vern couldn't have been given to a better person. You and Brent Musburger were honored and got to take give a little, couple little notes speech up there. Yeah. Thank you partner. That was uh, something. I'll yeah it was it was a, a heady night. It was. I'd say. Sitting right next to the Secretary of State. Yeah, Robert Gates. <laughs> no, that was, you know, and I get to stand next to Gary, so it's, it's been a good week. <laughs> Pretty good week. Tracy was there, and our producer, Craig Silver, Mike Oresco from our executive staff. It was... Uh, they gave you the old, old golden throne. Is that how they introduced you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Third down, it was... Uh, thank you very much. Third down and one. 7 nothing. How about 21 lost fumbles? I know. It, it, I, it, you just, there is no offense for, for that type of mistake. I mean, especially with the type of football players you have. I mean, you can hit all you want, and Army will, of course, never back down. Zach Watts, I think, was the guy that got that one. On yes, he did. Uh-huh. And Alexander Teach with the carry. 
Now let's check the uh, Verizon Red Zone stats. 28 touchdowns, 45 possessions. Right on the national average. Right. And usually the Navy teams are better than that in the red zone. Usually they're up about 70%. Uh, they're not quite there. A new quarterback, you know, Dobbs had done it so many years. It's always possible when those things happen. Option goes left. This is G.G. Green. And uh, Tyler Dixon, number 17. I'll tell you, Jacob draws that time, number 50. You can tell he faces this option every day in practice because he handled that so well. It was a counter option, one of the toughest things for your end men in the line of scrimmage to handle. He saw it instantly, spun off a block, and forced that wide for a great defensive. He didn't make the tackle. He's not going to get any credit for it, but he played it as good as you can. Second down, 10. Proctor has the only touchdown of the game. It was a four-yard run. Yeah, here's that unbalanced look that Navy gives you as they uh, move this offense further and further into the future, giving you so many different looks these days. Timeout taken by Army. That is their second. Beg your pardon. Maybe they've got one left. Navy leads 7 nothing. Let's take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. It's subtle, but you have to be experienced with this offense to really be good at stopping it. Watch Jacob Drowse right there, how he understands how Navy's trying to attack him. It's a counter play. He shifts out and he feels the blocker. He only gives him one leg to attack. Keeps his outside leg free. Then he can go down the line of scrimmage and wait for help in the secondary. You have to be patient as a defender and understand help's on its way. There he is, number 50. And that's why, you know, when Navy played, you know, early in the year, you know, different teams, when they played South Carolina, South Carolina couldn't handle it. They weren't used to seeing it. Second and 10. Proctor keeps it, cut down near the 10 yard line. This tackle made by Holt Zalneritis, number 88. Well, that's an interesting call here. Remember the bad field goal kicking, an right. extra point kicking. Yep. Near Matalolo, they're thinking, all right, do I go two downs and try to put one on the board? Or? Well, John Teague, the uh, senior place kicker for the season, Eight of 13, but he's had two blocked, and you saw his extra point. Look like a big shot. Well, it may be a new point. It is. Alex Teach, number 39, 10 yard touchdown. Boy, Teach looked like a, a seal there, didn't he? Ah, <laughs> yes. There was no stopping him on this one. Motion one direction, come out, pitch the ball to the fullback, and Teach flies into the end zone. He's from Conroe, Texas, about an hour away from Houston. One of 28 midshipmen selected for SEAL training. He's going to have shoulder surgery. He had, had one last year. Now he's going back in and having the other one uh, undergo the knife. And then he begins his SEAL training. Told us yesterday... It's going to be two and a half years before he becomes a complete Navy SEAL. Yeah, about a 20% make it through that right. program. Uh, maybe 19 other percent because that guy's making it. Everybody else better look for another spot because nobody's getting that spot. Alexander Teach, team captain of the Navy football team. I've been chosen to go into the SEAL community, but there's one last mission before that, and that's beat Army. Go Navy, beat Army. Both Naval touch Navy, Navy touchdowns have followed Army fumbles, and the uh, midshipmen up 14 to nothing, going after their 10th consecutive win in this series. 7.05 to go before the halftime break. If we need seven, let's go. Dixon and Williams are the deep backs. Relatively short kick taken by Scott Williams. And he uh, gets it out to the 20. 
Well, let's uh, take another look at that touch. Vern, sometimes they say all is fair in love and war, okay? Well, watch these three guys right here. We might say all is fair in love, war, and Army-Navy football because <laughs> watch Brady DeMell get his hand on Nate Combs just with his right hand trips the middle linebacker. That's the way it goes. Now, Brady DeMell might want to figure as you see Teach dive across there. You know why he can get away with that? He was a hockey player. Uh, Menor, Ohio, a hockey player. Those hockey players will do anything to get their guy. There you are. This is Malcolm Brown, number 23. Malcolm Brown with that carry. Proctor 15 carries and teach eight. And uh, they have uh, led this Navy team to a 14 nothing lead. One touchdown for each. Sweep right, Malcolm Brown. Well, Jabari Tawani has started, what, 50 games or right. 50 consecutive games he's played in. And we've met him now back to back years. I asked him a question. I said, Jabari, you played as a freshman. You played four years. You played against every big team as we get ready for third down here. I said, have you ever been in a game where you felt overmatched? And I got to Matt, and he said, never. <laughs> That's right. Remember, he interrupted never. Yes. And I, I believe him, too. He's six foot, 260 pounds, and he plays 100% every play. Here's the toss and a first down for Army. Out near midfield. That's Malcolm Brown. Jabari Tawani, the, the problem he's faced is a lack of height. Yeah, but I've seen some smallish defensive ends that, that can do it at this level, you know, and I at the next level. And I think two years go by quick. He's got a two year commitment. I would not be shocked. He does not get a chance in the NFL. No, chatting with him yesterday and you had a couple of, uh, of uh, comparatively sized defensive linemen in the NFL, one of whom was Dumber Dumerville. Yeah, no, it was Dumerville with the Broncos. There's Raymond Maples. Yeah, I, and, and he said, I want to try, you know, he basically, you're not stopping this guy. I mean, if he gets a shot out there, he said he will run a 4640. He bench presses 405 pounds. Uh, you know the type of player he is every every single snap. I think he would be a smart late round pick for somebody and just kind of wait on him for a couple of years. Larry Dixon. Well, this is uh, absolutely one of the great rivalries in college football. Here's the CBS poll question for this afternoon. What is the best rivalry in college football? We've given you five options. Some may disagree. Army Navy, Alabama Auburn. And uh, on third down, we'll try and get it back up uh, to complete the look in just a moment. Third and three. Toss, right, Maples. First down. You can see the speed that Maples has to get to the edge and make that first down. If you're the Navy team, you're expecting one of those fakes to the fullback inside with Dixon. This time, quickly they get to the outside. Mike McDermott, number 68, the senior tackle, does a great job of getting that edge for Army. And just to finish, Harvard, Yale, Michigan, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Texas. And uh, give us an idea of how you regard this rivalry in comparison to the others. Uh, Malcolm Brown with that carry. The core, this is not uh, a neutral site by any, well, not a, an equidistant site. This game has been played in Philadelphia 83 times. Members of the core came down. They got on the buses at 11.30 last night wow. to make the trek uh, down from West Point. And uh, as we have mentioned throughout See, I, this game. I was yet. complaining about my first class flight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Steelman. They'll not catch him. Trent Steelman, touchdown, Army. Well, the key is what their offense does when it works well. He had three touchdowns in their win against Northwestern, and it was on plays just like that. 
They don't like to go wide. They like to go in the off tackle with the option, and that was a beautiful example of what they do on offense. Alex Carlton, oh, it's a bad snap, but a nice hold. And the extra point is hammered home. I think they took advantage of Jabari Tawani's aggressiveness on this one. Let's see if they don't get a crashing end right there, and it's read very quickly by Trent. Comes inside, he tackles the fullback, and that's all it needed. The end came in, handled the fullback, and instantly, Trent Steelman, who's run this same play in practice probably a thousand times, instantly saw it, knew where the weakness was, and we got a 14-7 game. Well, the long gray line quite pleased right now as Trent Steelman goes over right guard and scoots in for the touchdown, which cuts the margin in half with 334 to go before the break. Steelman now with uh, six carries, 48 yards. He and Maples each with 48. And Brown with 28 to lead the men from West Point. Steelman with 12 rushing touchdowns now for the season. Three back of the uh, all-time leader, Torrey Crawford. And while many other quarterbacks in college football spent their summer throwing the ball around, Trent Steelman was at Camp Buckner leading 10 new graduates in their off-season program to become soldiers. Said it was the best thing he ever did in his life. He's, and you could tell, you could just see he was a different man that walked into our meeting rooms yep. when we went up to West Point this year. Well, he uh, he came to West Point because he had an offer to play Division One football. Right. And was not... Uh, not sure about it, was not he? Not sure about it. Interesting, uh, General Ray Odierno, who is the Army Chief of Staff, was here. Same thing. Same thing. He said he went to West Point because he wanted to play football and then became, obviously... Committed to a career. Here's the kickoff from Bo Snelson. Number four made the tackle. A Showtime original documentary, A Game of Honor, takes you inside Army and Navy football. Watch preview episodes of the film at cbssports.com slash honor. And for every video view today, a donation will be made to the Wounded Warrior Project. And our good friend David Faraday, our golf analyst, very, very involved in that Wounded Warrior Project. Teach hit at the line. And uh, had he broken the tackle, he was going to gain a lot of yards. But ifs and buts. Well, you establish your best player. Teach is their physical presence in this offense. In the Army defense. A.J. Mackey, the nose tackle. Last year, Mike Gann had such a dominating performance. This year, it's Mackey that has to hold the middle and allow the tackles from the outside, and that was your guy, Vern. Yep, Andrew Rodriguez. It sure was. He's a 4.14 student, and this time on a stunt, the stunt, the defensive call is what got it that time. He lined up wide, and they crossed to the outside, and. Teach goes. Oh. Fourteen seven Navy leads it. Army called timeout. That's the first that they've used. It's called assignment football. This time teach the fullback. Who has the assignment for the fullback? It's out here. Watch this how you keep it as gray as possible for the offense by stunting. And Rodriguez has the fullback, and he makes the play. And that's what you have to do. You cannot let the quarterback settle in on exactly who has the quarterback. You give him a little bit of gray and make him make a few mistakes. Andrew Rodriguez, whose father, General David Rodriguez, four-star general, and uh, was a cadet, graduated in class of 76. Now running the U.S. Army. Yeah, Army will take a timeout yeah. now, won't they? Yes, I'm sure. Yeah, they do. This is starting to feel a lot like last year's game. 
okay, when Army had that ball, and that drive at the end of the half, mm -hmm. they're gonna get the ball here now, you know, with an opportunity to under, just under three minutes to go. Let's see if they can finish a little better than last year. We'll show you. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. It's a doubleheader league game early, Kansas City and the Jets. Greg Gumbel and Dan Deerdorf will move into our spot for the New England-Washington game. And the league game late, Oakland at Green Bay. Can anybody stop Green Bay? It all begins with the NFL today, J.B. Vern, uh, Army needs to be very careful here. It's less than five yards for a first down. Maybe could try a shift or something to draw them off sides. Fourth and four. Beltran's first punt carried 34 yards. Fair catch. Call for taken. Josh Jackson, number 14. Well, we talked about it. It was 17-7 last year. Army was on a drive very similar to this. And then at the goal line, it's ripped out in Wyatt Middleton. Changes the game completely. A 14-point play. Remember that? Yes, I do. Wyatt Middleton graduated from the academy, but he is still on the grounds. The yard. And here's a nice run. Malcolm Brown, number 23. Middleton awaiting his ship assignment. 19. So similar. 17-7 last year. 14-7 yeah. now. Army has the ball. Good blocking this time by the Army receiver downfield, Austin Barr. He's 6'4", 210. He's bigger than some of the defensive linemen. But you have to be an Army to block, because that's usually what you do is block. On first and oh, 10. Oh, Steelman looks deep, fires it. Oh, he's got the catch. Inside the 35, Austin Barr on cue. Well, you know, Trent Steelman was not an option quarterback. Chris Proctor was. He was a triple option quarterback. Actually, he was recruited by Rich Ellerson to go to Cal Poly when Rich was at Cal Poly. But Trent was a thrower in high school, and he's fit this offense kind of different than the way Chris Proctor has. There's the fullback. That's Larry Dixon. Take another look at that pass. Yeah, half roll to the right. And just a little stop hook out to the outside. Go down about 12 yards. First pass play you put in. Motion goes one way. Everybody's flowing. Stop right there. Ball right to face. Perfect. Well, Austin Barr's got gaudy numbers for the season. That's his fourth catch. And uh, Malcolm Brown. Yeah, watch this high-risk ball handling right here by Malcolm Brown. He goes in motion and spins and catches the ball. That's a blind handoff from Trent Steelman to Malcolm Brown. And that's the ones you get those turnovers on, but you have to do it. 90 seconds, well now, 95, 85, and it's third down. Option pitch right oh, there. Look at that. Naples inside the 15. David Sperry, number 28, with the tackle. Watch how the offense fits together. They're going to run the same play, but fake it inside and run the option off of it. So the same quick handoff one way. He and Shields come back and runs the option the other way. And uh, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> On the left side, Malcolm Brown. No. It is Brown. And he's down near the five. Chris Ferguson, number 23, with the stop. Well, practically in the same position. Watch Raymond Maples, number one, get the block to the outside this time. He's their leading rusher, but you all have to block, and he gets the big one. Army uses its final timeout. And they're looking at second down and one, one and a half. We'll be right back. Geico Halftime Report scores and highlights from around the country. Tim Spencer and Aaron Taylor will be along 55 seconds on the game clock from now. And interesting now, Army out of timeouts, but they get a second down and one, one and a half. Yeah, now do they throw here? Remember, if they get a first down, the clock will stop. So, you know, they 
They've got to be quick. They still have time to run anything on this play. And there we go. Malcolm Brown, touchdown. They might review this one. Army better be ready to get back up there and run another play. It's very close whether he hit the ground first or he got across. What a block by Maples. And did it get across the line or was he short? Was the ball extended over the plane or not? Right down the line. Oh, I, don't, I don't think I don't so. Think so I'm either. telling you, I think they better get ready to run another play. Now, remember, that was a first down. So they could actually get up and spike the ball if they wanted to or run the call to play in the huddle right now, but they must be ready. It's very close. Called the touchdown on the field. Remember, breaking the plane is all the way up in the air. Right. And it's the front of the line. Any tip of the ball that touches the front of the line is a touchdown. Mm. Very, very close. Yes, it is. I thought that look from uh, down the line. And then he rolled it in. So I don't know if he extended it over. The running on the field stands. There you are. That was as close as I've seen all year, to tell you the yeah. truth. That was really close. 14-14, at least this year, they didn't have a 14 play going the other way, point play going the other way. Alex Carlson is on to uh, attempt the extra point, and I say attempt because he's missed five this year. 31 out of 36 for the season. High snap again. Nice job of getting the hold down. Colin Walk, number 38, is the holder. And uh, nice play. Well, instead of trying to pound it inside, Rich Ellerson goes with the option. Steelman performs perfectly, and we got a tie football game. Just a little bit of celebration among the long gray line. And they get in for the tying score with uh, less than a minute to go. Third, uh, second kickoff coming. <laughs> We got a lot going on. Oh, we do. We I tell you, okay, we got. We a, got notes being passed. And, and, and like last year, we were doing the same thing and trying to figure out who had the uh, the fumble recover me, who knocked it loose. Oh goodness. People think it's easy. You don't yeah. get mentioned at the Hall of Fame banquet for doing nothing. You get one of those awards. Now quit it. <laughs> Marcus Thomas, number 34, now with 41 seconds left. Navy has one left. Kyler Martin made the tackle. That's a 35-yard return. Well, I think Navy probably would have said, all right, that's the half. We get the ball to start the second half. But with this return, I think you got to think about, let's see if we can get into field goal range. Let's see what we can happen. Proctor remembers playing with that dislocated elbow. He will have Tommy John surgery when the season ends. Yes, a very good point that uh, needs to be remembered. Well, not this time. All the way back at the 26, Nate Combs, number 22 with the sack. And that should get it out of the half for Navy and Army. Nothing really there. You don't want to make a big mistake. Handled well to the outside. Nate Combs gets the tackle. He was the guy that was supposed to have leverage on that touchdown play. Remember when Mel got him with the trip? Right. Well, he got even there. Kind of. Kind of got even. Touchdowns are touchdowns, and that should be the half. How about that down? Seven to nothing. 14 to nothing with seven minutes to go. They get a TD, three and out, and a touchdown to make this a football game. Two touchdowns in a minute 45. And saluted by the cadets as they head toward the locker room. And 
Ken Nia Matalolo and the Navy cadets and the Navy midshipmen are uh, headed into their locker room. We go to Tracy, who's with Coach Rich Ellers. Coach, two critical fumbles. You get down 14 nothing, but two quick touchdown drives. How do you like how your team responded well, we, there? We, we've kept playing. I, I tell you what, you, you're right, though. If we just take care of the ball and eliminate the negative plays, we're, it's going to be a heck of a game. A lot on the line, as you just mentioned. Well, in these next 30 minutes, right. what will be the message to the team? Play hard, have fun. Great. Thanks a lot. Burn. All right, President Obama will now switch sides and spend the second half with Army. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, Aaron Taylor with a Geico Halftime Report after this message. Tim Brando in New York at halftime of the Army-Navy game tied at 14. President Obama switching sides from Navy over to Army. Vern, Gary, and Tracy will be back with the call of the second half right after this. The Home Depot College Football on CBS, Army-Navy, America's Game, presented by USAA, is sponsored by USAA, Nissan, Geico, and by The Home Depot. 1414 Army and Navy, it's our privilege to again call this game. The producers of Showtime have uh, been privileged to spend the season behind the scenes with both Army and Navy. You'll see the results of their effort in a game of honor. Here's a preview. It's our first day at the Military Academy. New cadet, step up to my line, and on my line, up to high my line, step up to my line. I'm a cleave, full word is a clevian. They were the lowest class in Roman society. I'm not smiling, I don't know why you're smiling. We aren't civilians anymore, you are in the army. I'm fourth class here, that means I basically have no privileges. About you can see a game of honor on Showtime December 21st on Wednesday and a moment ago the president of the United States Barack Obama who spent the first half with the men and women of the Naval Academy crossed over to the Army side where he'll spend the second half. Proctor cuts in. Touchdown Navy. Touchdown Navy. Here's Steelman. They'll not catch him. It's two of the goal line touchdown, Army. We are set to start the third quarter. Tied 14-14, Army and Navy. And moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Ken Niamatololo. <laughs> Coach, you jumped out to a 14-point lead, but they were able to get two quick drives there to score. What happened? Well, give them credit. They end up getting on our linebackers. we got to do a better job of keeping our linebackers free. Well, we got the ball to start the second half, and so, uh, you know, the ball's in our court right now. we got to get it done. All, t all year you've had trouble finishing. Did you bring that up to your team at halftime? No, all we brought up was we got 30 minutes. We don't want to leave any regrets on the field. Thanks a lot. Good luck. 30 minutes indeed, and uh, this could be really fun. Army, Navy, of course, Navy has won the last nine. And uh, this game means everything to these young men and women who will be comrades once the game is over and once their careers at the respective military institutions are complete. I think right now there's a lot of pressure on the Navy football team with that nine-game streak. Now, maybe if it gets into the fourth quarter and Army has the lead, this pressure may shift over to them trying to finish it. But right now, I think Navy may be tight. Well, they gave up two touchdowns in a minute 45. And already Army in this uh, ball game has rushed for 201 yards. They are the leading rushing team in the country. And they've now gone over 4,000 yards for the season. Yeah, think about it. They have rushed for over 200 yards in every game this season. And the kickoff coming. Alexander Teach and Marcus Thomas are the deep men. 30 minutes to go. Army, Navy for the 112th time.
Teach. Thomas. Navy a first down at the 49. That's a 47-yard return. This is just something you don't see a lot in college football, your fullback returning the kickoffs, right? I mean, it's, he is a splendid athlete. Tough to bring down. And when he gets the football, even on the kickoff, he's a threat to go the distance. So a nice start to the second half. For the midshipmen, 14-14, they've got a first down at the 48-yard line. Oh, and a big play right off the bat inside the 35. So Navy, having yielded, that's Delvin Diggs, the backup fullback, and having yielded those quick touchdowns, what a great start for them. Yeah, actually on that play, uh, Army ran the same stunt when Rodriguez made the tackle, and this time he missed the, missed the fullback. But it has been an exciting first half. One pass completed right. in the game. <laughs> Had a few turnovers to kind of get it going that way, but the way and precision, the way these teams can run the ball really catches your eye and makes it a fun half. This is Delvin Diggs, number 37. And Gary, take us through the trends. Well, we talked about the quarterbacks in the open and how they have to be the key players in this game. Steelman had that touchdown run that really started it. Chris Proctor, a lot of those yards, Vern, was on the scramble off the pass. They've handled Proctor pretty well in the option game. And there you see it. Pretty evenly matched Army with more yards running the ball. Navy got theirs off turnovers. There's the run to the left side. GG Green, number 21. First and goal when they spot the ball just inside the 10. Rodriguez and Mackey made the tackle but a 21 yard gain watch left tackle for an art and navy this time right here vickers watch those army players are trying to play the option and all of a sudden inside zach watts is saying i want to stop the option and he's getting blocked by graham vickers first and goal teach Barges down inside the five. Tyler Dixon, number 17, with the stop. Well, you've won this matchup nine straight years. You know you're not going to go to a bowl game this year. So these seniors don't want to be the group that allows Army to win the football game and break the streak. And that senior might be the toughest one of them all. Proctor keeps it, Proctor drives, yep. Proctor scores! Vern called it exactly. Keeps it, drives, and then second effort, he spins around and makes the touchdown. John Teague with the extra point. Yeah, I think it all happened on the first play of the drive when Army had a stunt to stop the fullback and missed him, a missed assignment. This one is perfect. Snap, hold, and the kick. Five plays, 48 yards. It took two minutes and 17 seconds, and the quarterback scores for the second time in the ball game. Navy breaks the tie early in the third. Crowd of 80,789 here in Landover, Maryland, just outside the nation's capital. As Navy quickly reclaims the lead 21-14.
Scott Williams is the deep man. John T kicks it off, and it will be taken at the 11-yard uh, line. Well, earlier you saw the uh, Heisman finalists, all five, as guest with uh, him and Spencer. Monty Ball, one of the five in New York City for the Heisman announcement tonight. Robert Griffin the third, Andrew Luck, quarterback of Stanford. Tyron Matthew, the honey badger. And Trent Richardson, the running back from Alabama. And that announcement coming up tonight. The fact, Gary, that five were invited to New York indicates, I think, that close, it's pretty right? close. Yeah, yeah. probably close. I think it'll be as close as ever, maybe. Around the left side. Well, that, that seems a good segue to cue the duck. Ah. Ah. The half life trivia question. <laughs> what was the closest Tyson trophy vote in history? Want a hint? Ah. Just keep you on the edge of your seats. First down and ten. Raymond Maples number one. Now let's take a look at the stats. Ball, Griffin, Luck, Matthew, and Richardson. Pretty much, obviously, all year I thought it was Andrew Lux to lose, but mm -hmm. he needed to do well at the end of the season, and he gave an opening with that loss to Oregon to Robert Griffin. And I'm wondering, because Richardson didn't play, and Griffin did, and that big last win against Texas, is that might be the difference in the vote. Here's the fullback up the middle, plus Larry Dixon. Inside the 30 to the 28 with the first down, Travess Bush stopped him a gain of 31. Well, the linebackers was the talk, not allowing the offensive lineman to get on him. Frank Allen is the guy that got on the linebacker. Just what Niamatololo told Tracy happened exactly that way. The second level has been pierced by those guards from Army. You know. I mean, Buddy Green told us that Army has been able to run the ball against any odd front. By what he means about that is someone on the center, the nose tackle, but the guards being uncovered. And he thought he'd show a little bit of a covering the guards by bringing his defensive ends down, but so far he has not showed it. There you go. Oh, this is a Bob Knight play. How about this one? Oh. I don't know what that means. Better. He, he likes the bounce pass. That's I know that. A, that's right? open to and the head fake. The head fake. Right. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I know him would I add the chair throw. Right. Second down. Of course, Bob Knight was the head basketball coach at West Point before going to Indiana. And among his students, the captain of the team, Mike Krzyzewski, who just became the all time winner. When I'm coach in basketball. Remember the history. famous chair throw? Yes. Was against Purdue. Ooh, that's right. That's right. 21 14. 10 minutes to go in the third. Third down, seven. Again, is it four down territory? It always. Oh, there's the head fake. Steelman got a man open. That's going to be a touchdown to Malcolm Brown. up in the air with the head fake and then drove to the basket with a perfect pass <laughs> extra point is good from Alex Carlton the seventh catch of the season for Malcolm Brown and it's just just four vertical You're just gonna see him come right out here and read this man in the middle he overruns it and there it is you just read the safety if he goes wide 
you throw the seam. If he stays with the slot back, you go to the wide receiver. When the safety goes wide, there's the seam down the middle, and Trent Steelman delivers. And how about that answer for the Navy touchdown? First two drives of the second half. Two scores. We're back at uh, FedEx Field. Another look at the head fake. It's all about fundamentals. You have to make the fake into the fullback. Hold the linebackers. In essence, you've just faked the defense. Make them commit first. And then Steelman, who gets pounded all game, just reads that one safety is just a throwing off the safety to that side. And Army says, you know, this passing ain't bad. <laughs> Steelman with the touchdown toss, his 13th career pass and his third against the Naval Academy. 21 21, 9.45 to go in the third. Last two kickoffs for Navy, they've returned 40 and 48 yards. Let's see if Army can try to hold some field position here for their defense. Teach and Thomas are the two deep men. Remember right before the end of the half, they had a good one also. There's Teach. Eric Osteen will kick off, number 37. From the goal line. Alex Teach, not this time. And let's go down to Tracy, who's with the owner of the Washington Redskins, Daniel Snyder. That's right. And Daniel, you've wanted this game for so long. You outbid several other cities. Why was it so important to you? Well, for 10 years, we've been working on it. And uh, it's an honor, a privilege to have this great game here. 112 years. They've been in Washington, D.C. And uh, to host it is an amazing thing for us. And uh, we're just proud of it. This is your first Army-Navy game. Your thoughts on what you've seen so far? Well, it's 21 all, so it's a heck of a game. And uh, we, we hope that uh, this becomes a tradition, hosting this game uh, every few years for Washington. And being the nation's capital is a big deal, and, and uh, it really belongs here. How about the whole beginning of the game and the march on and watching these teams join together at the end of the game as well that you'll wait and see? It's, it's really something to see. It's a beautiful sight. And, and, uh, for it to be hosted in the nation's capital. It's about time, and, and we hope to create a new tradition here. Well, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Vern? All right, Tracy, thank you. That was a run by Aaron Santiago just a moment ago. And a first down 10 at the 34. Alexander Teach. Vern, I want to read over my notes from last year, and I had something happen to me that I really never got on air last year that I think still fits. I was walking through the stands and an elderly gentleman with his wife was sitting there four hours before the game, kind of cold, and he goes, go Boilers. I turned around and I go, uh, you have somebody playing here on either side? He goes, no, but this has always been my bucket list to come and watch Army Navy. He sat and watched the game and I just thought about it all game that if you love college football, this should be your college football bucket list. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the... The third that you and I have been privileged to do together, and it is, oh, it's another fumble. Oh, here you go. Maybe the other direction oh, this time. Oh, my goodness. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Jeffrey Bacon, number six, recovered it. Yeah, uh, Steve Erzinger was there handling the option. Let's see if he ripped it loose. He did. It was Erzinger who the senior who's made so many plays for this defense played the option and he's the one that ripped it loose he started off this season when they lost to northern illinois made 21 tackles we interviewed him on wednesday he gave all the credit to alexander and his teammates rodriguez but uh, he's quite a football player excuse me andrew rodriguez right and here's uh, Larry Dixon, number 26. So the turnover's even now at two and two. Yeah, but this one might be coming back. Might be a penalty inside. I think it was Frank Still Allen. Block, number 79 yeah, off was. Is 15 yards. Still first down. 
Frank Allen got a hand on. I think he, played, he probably caught a stunt trying to get somebody in between and pulled them down. Watch right there. Got the nose tackle. Oh, it's a high low play right there. That's mm. what it was called. You post up, excuse me, oh, that's great. post up on the center, and then you get the cut block from the guard. So a 15 yard penalty. They marched the ball all the way back uh, just outside the 40 yard line. By the way, for years and years and years, when the wishbone was in its heyday, that block was legal. Yes. And when you played nose tackle, it, it, it was for men to play nose tackle back in those days. You had to fight off those blocks all day. The foul was administered from the previous spot. First down. And so first down, 25. Last three drives, three touchdowns for Rich Ellerson's bunch. This is a disastrous drive. It looks like Army got the ball back, though. And it wasn't the quarterback, was it? I don't think so. No, Steelman's yeah. coming out. I think it was fought and got by the guard inside. Matt Vellante? Yes, it was number 71 that ended up with the ball. Yes. Boy, quarterback center exchange. That didn't even get close. Second down, 23. Oh, they get him? Yes, they did. Delay game. Offense. Five yards. Still second down. Let's go back to that quarterback center exchange again. That if that was a mistiming all the way. I think Steelman expected that ball a lot earlier than it got there. I wonder if the center, Poets that time, was surprised by the snap count and he was late with it because it seemed like Steelman thought that ball would be there a lot earlier. On second and 28, there's the pitch. Good block in the corner, and Raymond Maples picks up a few. Jared Shannon, number 10, made the tackle. Well, when you say it's a good block on the edge or the corner, you're usually talking about the other slot back. It was Malcolm Brown that time, number 23. And this inside wishbone with both backs in the backfield, you get those arc blocks to the outside, and they can be deadly. Steelman. Off the back foot, just throws it away. It'll be a punting situation. Well, in three, this is the third drive that Army has basically stopped themselves. Two turnovers, and this time with a penalty and, and, and loss of downs. Great field position to start the drive, and they get nothing out of it. Yeah, there, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's three drives Army has given away because of their own inability to perform the offense. That recovery of the fumble was made at the 45-yard line, and they wound up having to punt on fourth and 20. Chris Bolt punts it away to Matt Aiken, who is nailed immediately. 38-yard punt, three on the return. Frank Siva, the long snapper, is down to make the tackle. So Navy's got the ball back. Third quarter from Washington, D.C. The Home Depot College Football on CBS. Army-Navy, America's game presented by USAA, is sponsored by America's Navy. Bud Light. AT&T. And by Aflac. Tied to 21 here midway through the third, 6.15 to go. Steve er Erzinger, who uh, provided what appeared to be a key play a moment ago <laughs> when he ripped the ball loose from Proctor. Army un unable to capitalize, but Steve Erzinger, the senior,
is one of the subjects profiled in a game of honor. We can train these guys for the battlefield in Iraq and Afghanistan, and five, ten years from now, they may be in a totally different situation. What we're really doing is trying to ingrain in them critical thinking and that decision-making process. This is this is pretty tough. Uh, always trying to like keep on your toes, so you always have to have kind of an edge around you. The game of honor will premiere Wednesday, December 21st, only on Showtime. And Steve's twin brother plays football for Texas Tech. We asked him why the Naval Academy, and he said, I wanted to be different. First down 10. He's going to be a difference maker in life. Yes, he will. On the sweep. This is Aaron Santiago. Erzinger with the tackle. Well, Rich Ellerson charged on the field. Navy has not been penalized. Watch Jabari Tawani here. And Streelman might be a soldier, but he faked this one. Watch Tawani. Watch him shake his finger. <laughs> There's Rich right there. Tawani gave him a little finger like, no, 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 uh, not even okay. close. Teach. Watch Javari at the end of this one more time here at the end of this play. Gone. No, I'm a senior. I'm not going to fall for that. Just no, no, no. No, no. You uh, fake that. Uh, <laughs> Javari Tawani, number 98, out of Nashville. Almost, uh, almost was ready to accept an offer from Furman when he was contacted late by the Naval Academy. Third down. Pitch right. That should be enough for the first down. It was Aaron Santiago again. Aaron Santiago is listed at 5'8, 170. Uh, try 5'6 and a half, 155. Yeah, uh, yep. Okay, but he is a playmaker for them. Remember what Ivan Jasper told us. He thought they'd have to hit a couple passes to loosen up this Army defense. They haven't done one yet. Well, here's the first attempt. Deep right side. Incomplete. Intended for Casey Bolina. And defended by Hayden Pierce. Yes, Hayden Pierce, one of the two corners. Josh Jackson and Hayden Pierce feels it, turns around and finds the ball. And remember, it's tough. Like Ricky Dobbs was a healthy thrower. Chris Proctor's trying to do this with a arm and elbow that's going to need surgery. Second down, 10. And that's why Army can cheat their defenders closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. Here comes the blitz. Proctor throws it for the second time, and it's complete. You could feel it coming. The defense is now at about six or seven yards. They do not believe Chris Proctor. You know, can you look at there's the four or five of them right there. One safety that's supposed to be deep. He has to match up quickly with the slot, and he doesn't do it. Tyler Dixon can't get there. And so the chain is moved to first down and 10 for Navy. 21 all, 4 14 to go in the third. In a way, though, for Army's defense, a pass for just a first down is a win. Pitch late. Right side. G.G. Green. Gary mentioned earlier he represents the speed in the Navy back, uh, backfield. Well, in just 170 attempts in his career, G.G. Green, a junior from Columbia, South Carolina, has gained over 1,200 yards. And on the option like that, you can see why he can get to that corner quickly. And another first down, maybe 21 all, 345 to go in the third. Nice run. Alex Teach, number 39. Now we've been uh, talking a little bit about the Heisman Trophy, which will be awarded later tonight. Here's the Aflac trivia question answer. The closest Heisman Trophy vote in history. Mark Ingram over Toby Gerhardt, 28, 28 points just uh, two years ago. There have been, of course, 
five Heisman winners representing these two military institutions. One of them is here tonight, Roger Staubach from Dallas. I don't know if Joe Bellino is here or not. And the other three, Pete Dawkins of uh, West Point, along with the late Doc Blanchard and the late Glenn Davis. Delvin Diggs for 37 yards. And it's just the nature of things that I don't think uh, an academy graduate will ever win. Well, it'll be tough again. Yeah. Well, this offensive line for Navy, Vern, we've talked about the Army offensive line. Most of their seniority comes with their offensive line. Left guard Josh Cabral, senior, 24 straight starts. Brady Demel, 25 starts. John Dowd, 24 starts. Ryan Bassford, 20 starts at right tackle. Right across those four guys right there is where all their veteran leadership comes from. I'm first down. There's another late pitch, left side. That was John Howell, number 33. And Army believing they had recovered it. It is ruled not so. Well, this is the type of drive that Army likes to put together. Nine plays. Finally threw the ball a couple times, yes. completed one. Kind of grinding out first downs. Really on the field as the runner was down on the phone. Rich Ellerson, whose father is a U.S. Military Academy grad. He has two brothers who also graduated from West Point. Right at the end of the play here. Let's see what happens. This is Howell. The ball is trying. It looked to me like his left knee was down as that ball popped out. There wasn't a huge hue and cry from the Army bench. Knee goes down and then the ball goes yeah. out. This would be a tough one to overrule. And I don't think it will be. Here's a look from behind. Now yeah, it looks like that left knee is down before the ball came out. Yeah, Tyler Dixon was the guy trying to rip it out that time, the free safety. Zach Watts was there as well. Number 40. It's kind of worked into Army's favor in a way. This drive, it looked like they were a little bit gassed out there. They're now going to be able to regroup for this second down play unless they get the ball somehow. After further review, the running on the field stands. Second down, six. Mentioned the... Uh, there's President, o President Obama is going to leave the premises a little early. They'll be back in the White House within 10 minutes. Up the middle. And it'll be third down. Nice play by A.J. Mackey that time, the nose tackle. One of the only veteran defensive linemen they have. Is that him right there? I'm not quite sure where he lined up on this play. No, he was outside in the other side of spot at defensive end. That shifting defense for Army. Nose tackles move all around. This time it looks like an odd front. They kind of switch around the whole game. Proctor with the keeper, and he did not get it. Now, now what do you do? Fourth down. Erzinger. And Tyler Dixon. Well, Payam Sadat, the defensive coordinator for Army, has changed up their look. You see how they've moved their tackles and nose tackles wider to give Navy a different look here to try to slow it down. Be a 37-yard field goal or fourth and one. And they will go for the first down. Fourth and one in the tie game late in the third. He got it. Proctor, first down, maybe at the 14. And this time for Chris Proctor, it was a run all the way. 
There was no faking here. This was a quarterback keep. It might have might as well have been Ricky Dobbs. Because that time Alexander Teach was just coming up to block. He never thought he was going to get the ball. Ken Nia Matalolo, a graduate of high Hawaii when he was a quarterback, and his coach was Rich Ellerson. Two longtime associates and friends. And Chris Proctor just picked up the first down on the final play of the third quarter. That's the end of three, 21 all. We'll return to our nation's capital right after this word from your local station. Man, I'm so psyched to get this boat out on the water. Not as psyched as I am for this Army-Navy game. Yeah! Man, Navy's gonna mop up. Hey, Navy, you're going to need a bigger boat. Go, Army! Be Army! Oh, goodness. <laughs> we welcome you back to Landover, Maryland, just outside the nation's capital. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. And a first down 10 for the Naval Academy. They come left this time. This is G.G. Green. As Navy threatening to break the tie, Tyler Dixon, number 17. Well, Tyler Dixon had 14 tackles against Rutgers, and you can see why. The sophomore is the guy that chases down these sweeps to the outside. He lines up very shallow as the free safety. He's almost another middle linebacker a second wave but he runs the alley from side to side he's responsible for that pitch man second down five at the nine Miss Dixon Proctor gives it out up the middle Alex teach This was so beautifully blocked. This was a counter trap. Watch the guard pull across. Number 68, John Dowd. Really no one to block that time. Jacob Troyes kind of was looking for the option, playing assignment football, and Dowd came across and kind of scooted him out of the way without even trying. Teach 16 carries, 83 yards now. 15th play of the drive, first and goal. Not this time, Proctor. Fake and follow the fullback. And just that pursuit down the line that time stopped that play. Remember Chris Proctor had that touchdown at the end of the Air Force game. And, right. And had the unfortunate unsportsmanlike call against them. Situation similar to this on fourth down. Proctor. Well, third no down. touchdown. Yep, third right down. Well, his was Chris Proctor against the Air Force on October 1st. He scored. And a little verbal sparring, some physical. And Proctor was flagged, and he got a 15-yard penalty, and subsequently they missed the extra point after the uh, penalty had been marked off and wound up losing by one. Yeah, that was a tremendous comeback for the Navy football team in that game against Air Force. A lot of emotions going on right there. They came from 18 points down, and then in overtime, that missed extra point cost them. Time called. A.J. Mackey is the injured player. We'll return in a moment. Well, we thought the president was uh, leaving the premises a few moments ago, but he was sickly, uh, strictly switching seats. And uh, went in among the cadets. And now he stands, as do they, on third down. Oh, penalty. Whoa. First Whoa. one of the game by Navy. Looked like it was Graham Vickers, number 70. Five yards. 
Phil Thorndale. You never take anything for granted. Think this might be automatic, and Vickers just too anxious after the timeout, and now it's a completely different situation on third and six. Remember the last time in this long yarded situation they went with the option wide to teach. These two teams between them are number one and number four in fewest penalties in a game. Navy leads the country. Army is number four. That is the first penalty of the afternoon. Third and goal. Same Proctor. play. Teach. Proctor keeps. It's fourth down. Well, there hasn't been a lot of penalties on the Navy team, but that was a huge one. They probably would have taken both opportunities to score. Now they're going to have to go field goal, the option wide, and look at the pursuit from inside out, and it was stopped by Zelder Nidus right there, wasn't it? Holt Zelder Nidus. It was. So John Teague is on. He's had trouble this year. He's had two blocked, an extra point, two of them blocked. And one missed game winning field goal. This one is from 23. Cuts it inside the right upright. And maybe reclaims the lead. Well, nope. the Army defense stopped him on first and second down. And then they got the penalty, and Rich Ellerson says, hey, we'll give him three. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Navy started the scoring. Chris Proctor, a four-yard rushing touchdown. They were up 7-0, and they scored again shortly thereafter. This was Alex Teach on the uh, pitch. Dived in for the score, 14-0. But Army responded with two touchdowns in short order. First, it was Steelman from 34 yards out. That made it 14-7. Malcolm Brown, a five-yard rushing touchdown, 14-14. Opening drive, third quarter, Proctor again. And it was 21-14, but on the subsequent drive, a pass from Steelman to Brown, 25-yard touchdown, tied it up, and then just a moment ago, John Teague from 23 yards out to give Navy another lead. <laughs> And the kickoff forthcoming now. Scott Williams and Larry Dixon are the deep men. 24-21 with 12-03 to go in the ball game. That last shot, they may be our future leaders, but they're still kids, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, that was really touching to see. Exactly. They're having fun. How enthralled they were to, to turn around and listen to the president. Here we go, Scott Williams. The ball's out. The ball is out. It is another Army fumble. Who got it? Navy. Sometimes you can sell out a bit too much. And this time, selling out, that ball popped loose. Noah Copeland forced the fumble. Jordan Drake recovered it. Boy, it, it has been the story of the Army season right here. Look at that form tackle, by the way. Hellman goes right on the football. And now this Army defense must hold here. They must hold for a field goal. Third lost fumble of the game. And does Chris Proctor have another throw in that elbow of his? Fumble back. Oh, my goodness. That was Teach. Army's turnover story the last couple of years. In 2010, they were plus 16 in turnover margin. And put them in a bowl game. Yes, and look how they have plunged this year. Minus nine. 
and their margin of error can, does not allow. They don't have good enough football players to have that happen. They need to be precise, and those fumbles and turnovers have just killed their team. Left side, Leach. Well, Navy comes in four and seven, and their bowl run ends at nine. Six games decided by seven points or less. One and five record in those games. And, and opposite the year before, they won all those close games the year before. They did get shellacked in a couple of losses to Southern Miss and to Notre Dame. Proctor has thrown two for the day, completed one. Does he have another one in him? Timeout called. And is taken by Navy. Ten minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. 24-21. Navy. The Home Depot College Football on CBS. Army Navy, America's game presented by USAA, is sponsored by USAA. The Droid Razor. Ram Trucks. And by the U.S. Army. Big third down coming up, 24-21. Ken Niamatololo, the head coach in his fourth year, is a native Hawaiian. He is profiled in the documentary, A Game of Honor. My heart will always be in Hawaii, but Annapolis has definitely become the home for my family. To play here at the Naval Academy, you need to be a young man of great integrity. You need to have a great work ethic. You need to be highly motivated to continue the tradition of uh, Navy football. A Game of Honor premieres Wednesday, December 21st, only on Showtime. Third and nine. Third and nine. 24 21. Proctor will throw. And he has to throw it away because he was under terrific pressure. Led by Andrew Rodriguez, number 42. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're out of field goal range. You're not going to kick a field goal. Like, well, I guess he has made a 54 yarder this year, but he did been, the opening game. He right? did. Yeah. But he's been shaky since. <laughs> well, be a 44 yarder. Yeah, they're going to try. Well, there's not as much pressure on this one. <laughs> Great stop by that Army defense, helped by Navy's fumbled snap. 44 yard attempt for John Teague. He's hit one from 23 last drive. Wow, he got it just inside. Wow, he drew. Good for him. Still a win for the Army defense, but that puts Navy within a field goal of getting more than a seven-point lead. Beltran with the hold. Ah, oh, come on. Sure. <laughs> Never a yeah, doubt. English. Ten twenty six twenty seven twenty one. Well, Gary, you uh, opened the afternoon with a talk about the two quarters. Yeah, that was, that was safe. Option offense. You <laughs> figure these guys are going to handle the ball. Chris Proctor got the first two scores on the ground. He's got that toughness and that option. But Trent Steelman broke it open with this inside keeper that kind of gutted the Navy defense. And and then the pass, the unexpected pass that really made this a football game and has forced the Navy defense to stay on their heels. Really been a story for Army of turnovers again, basically. Yes. Without the turnovers, I mean, they, they have moved the ball against the Navy defense. And they get it back now, trailing by six with 10.26 to go. Yeah. Hold on to your hats. James Britton, freshman, Safety. Well, we uh, posed a poll question a while ago. Army Navy, 44% winner. Alabama Auburn, the second choice. 
Michigan Ohio State Harvard Yale in there. And uh, I hear a cry from the West Coast about don't forget UCLA USC. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Say the West Coast or the West Side of our truck. <laughs> oh. Got a real big USC. Yeah, this, we do. Yes, we do. There's Steelman. Bill O'Brien, actually known as Irish to us, he's a big USC fan. USC well, here's fan. the thing, though, with Bill. He graduated from St. John's. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Well, again, the good read inside. Tawani takes the fullback. And just as you're supposed to do, keep it and move the chains. Joshua Jones with the tackle. Ten minutes to go. We're under 10. 27-21. Think about this drive. If you're an Army fan or an Army football player, nine straight years. There's no bowl game for either team this year. Right. Steelman cuts inside, picked up uh, three to the 36. What might one drive in the fourth quarter mean to Army football? Mm. And they like to control the fourth quarter. In two of their wins, they had the ball for over 10 minutes of the fourth quarter. They put together an eight or nine minute drive and put a touchdown on. They could steal this game. Fullback. That's Dixon, the freshman that we mentioned. He started the last four games and has scored in each of those four. Average point differential. Look at this. A nine game winning streak for Na Navy. Third down, two. Toss. First down, Army. Raymond Maple, 6'1, 200 pounder, the sophomore out of Philadelphia. Well, how about that call by uh, offensive coordinator Ian Shields that time? Everybody's thinking it's going to be fullback up the middle. Navy stunts inside and basically run out of the way of the sweep. Great call. At the 45. About another minute or so, you almost are in four down territory for the game. Well, there's a good stop inside. Yes, it was. Dixon, the fullback. Couldn't move it. Yeah, Jared Marks was in on that one. Nose tackle. Second down. Marks is their biggest football player. He's 300 pounds. Big number 91. Safe to say Marks is not going to go into submarines. submarines. I was right. just thinking the same thing. <laughs> We've been together too That's long. Right. <laughs> we are corny, aren't we? <laughs> is complete at the 40-yard line. David Brooks, number 13. Well, they did the speed sweep on third down. This time, David Brooks goes out. Lead blocker is the center. Powis. Powis, excuse me. Ryan Powis and another nice throw by Trent Steelman. Steelman now three of five for 49 yards. Brooks. That's his ninth catch of the season, and he is the leader. This uh, Army team dead last in passing yards. 48 per game. Quick opener. Maples. 7.14 to go. Army trying to break a nine-game losing streak. Who, who popped up? Now with Jim Young. Jim Young, yes. it is. Yes. Army coach. See yeah. Dwight Eisenhower in the lower level there at one, on one of the cards. Mike. Second down four. Unless it's long yardage now, you pretty much have to believe Army's going to use all four downs. Like fourth and real long. Pull back again. Dixon breaks it. Dax, he did. Remember, Larry Dixon is just a freshman. Jared Hassan has been beat up as a fullback for two years of doing this. They've turned the ball over to Dixon. And in the last five games, Dixon has been the number two rusher for this Army football team. And he picked up a first down 10 at the 28. Right run right through. 
20 that time. That didn't there goes Brown. Cuts it inside. He's down at the 24-yard line. Coming up later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Six minutes to go. Second and six. There's General Eisenhower, upper left-hand corner. Steelman wants to throw. Hit from behind. And is tackled all the way back to the 32-yard line. Let's give some credit to this Navy secondary this time. The safety does a nice job of playing the option and reading the arc pass and getting back on it just in time where Steelman had not enough time to watch him and get away from the defense at the same time. Taken down by Matt Warwick. Matt had his first start a year ago in this football game. Right. And there is a player down in between the 25 and the 30. It's Jared Shannon up now and walking off. Well, we uh, took the train down from New York the other day and shared the train with Steve Croft, and you'll see him tomorrow night with the president. The Jeep postgame show coming up immediately following the conclusion of this 112th playing of Army and Navy. Well, tough call here for Army. Passing on second down and getting sacked. The Army pass offense does not work when Navy expects it. So now you've got to wonder, will they run here and give two downs to try to get a first down? Or will they try to throw the ball in an obvious pass situation? Third and 11. Difference in the demeanor on the two sides. As uh, the Navy guys doing jumping jacks, it's very quiet over on the Army side. Third and 11. 5.20 to go. Steelman at the 25. Travess Bush made the tackle. Fourth and seven. Army goes for it. Under five to go, they trail by six. Timeout. Oh, that's a big timeout. Because if they don't make it, now they're... You know, it's getting the clock where they might want to get the ball back. Both teams with two timeouts left. It's an historic moment for the country and the president, and tomorrow you won't want to miss the wide-ranging interview with President Obama only on 60 Minutes tomorrow, only CBS. And the president has become invested in this ballgame. And... Uh, we, we did the same thing up of here. Of course we did. <laughs> <laughs> we took our pictures with him, didn't we? We, uh, we couldn't let the president go. There were photo ops all around. Fourth down and seven. Fourth and seven. Well, it's, it's always easier for the bench for Navy to be cheering up than Army wants it quiet so they can run their audible. <laughs> Navy wants it loud. Anthony Stevens is in a wide receiver. Now the look back. The play is flashed in. David Brooks is the receiver at the top of the screen. Got him. Matt Warwick, number 51. One started his first game a year ago. His father, Vince, also a graduate of West Point. Matt was born in Germany. And he was all over that quarterback keep on that one. In that game last year, he had 13 tackles, but none bigger than that one. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. 
you think this is important? His father was a graduate of the class of 1980. And there's the run around the right side. Chris Proctor. Josh Jackson, number 14. Yeah, Matt Warwick had banks. He had both sacks in that drive. He had it on the pass, and then he came back on the option. Here's the Chris Proctor. Kind of weaving his way through it. I think the skateboarder is a great description of how he attacks the game of football. Now that was his coach Ken Niamatololo's description of him yesterday. He is a California kid. Second down and one. 345 to go. First down. Clock stops. Army can only stop the clock two more times. Yeah, and remember, they don't have a pass offense that can score in one minute. So I think right now, this is it. They need to draw the line right now. If I'm Rich Ellerson, I'm using my timeouts now because you need time to run your offense if you get a stop. And they have just called a timeout. One remaining for the cadets. 27 21 three minutes and 39 seconds to go. And so you know it's a little different strategy I believe because you're a running team. If you were a passing team you would save your timeouts a little longer but I think here if they get a stop they got to start thinking about stopping the clock right away. Proctor keeps it. If they get a stop. Yeah, that's the I, big I still if. think yeah. Army will take their timeouts. They do. They do. We thought they had taken one prior to the last play. No, no, no but they, they took not. one earlier on did. offense. Yeah. This yep. is the second one now. This is dangerous, though, because it's second and, what, three yards. Will Trent Steelman even get the ball back? You know, I, I really have to think that Army's one call they would like to have back is that second down pass when they got sacked. I, I, I'm, you know, when you're thinking four down territory, I'm thinking second down, I'm giving that ball or faking the ball to the fullback. They couldn't use a negative yardage play. And then, of course, on fourth down, Warwick with a big stop. Right now, second down and three. And uh, Army with one timeout left. Rich Ellerson's defense will be bringing the house here. They need a negative play. Raymond Maples, you saw him on the sideline, hoping that he and his offensive teammates will get one more shot. So is Trent Steelman. Let's see if Rodriguez might stunt inside and make a play. Proctor has it. Short of the first down. Jacob Droz makes the stop. Inside, take on your players, funnel it back inside. Gray French makes the tackle. Now third and short. Basically, this is it. Proctor with 29 carries today. Steelman. They got him. They did. And a timeout will be called by Arnold. Yes, Tyler Dixon, number 17. Well, you know, Navy took so much time in the huddle trying to bleed the clock that they ran up and never really got this play off. Stopped inside and went away. That's the free safety. I said they'd be bringing everybody. So fourth down. Got your free safety stopping the quarterback almost on a keeper. They will measure. About a foot. 
about a foot. Yeah, now do you go for it here? Ball game if you make it. Yeah. But if you punt it, remember Army's offense is not an explosive offense. They also, remember, could try to draw Army offside. So the offensive unit remains on the field. Yeah. Here we go. Here's your ball game. They could be trying just to get the penalty also. Everybody up for Army. There's no one else on the field but those guys in the picture. Jared Droz, number 50, might be the guy that forced the play. The Navy team, did they react to number 50's movement? Offside. Defense. Defense is saying it's a zone. Causing the offense. I think it was Jacob Droz, number 50, that moved. Watch him right. Here, see that step, and that means the offense reacts to it, and that draws the five-yard penalty. Wow. You can't, I don't think Navy Vern was ever going to snap the ball. Right. I think they were going to punt it. And the team reacts as the flag is thrown, and Droz called for offside, and that should do it. 1.45 to go. One timeout remaining for Navy. Here's the 31st carry for Chris Proctor. Army has one last timeout to call. And this group of Army seniors will complete their careers without ever having won against Navy. Conversely, Navy's seniors have never lost. Last time out called with 97 seconds to go. And indeed, it has been a decade of dominance. But the previous nine games have been overwhelming victories for the most part for Navy. And this time, this is really, really closely contested. Uh, I have to say, Army without their own mistakes. Yep. As you see Trent Steelman on the bench right there. Just too many mistakes that stop themselves. Penalties and fumbles. Right side. Alexander Teach. Senior from Conroe. <laughs> he just said, give me the ball. <laughs> and you know, for Alexander Teach, I asked him why he wanted to go to the Naval Academy. And he said, 9-11 did it for me. I wanted to serve. And he will. We mentioned about three hours ago that he is one of 28 men accepted for SEAL training. He will go through shoulder surgery first and then two and a half years of training. Proctor down. Proctor now with 32 carries, 96 yards, two touchdowns. He is our player of the game. The seventh career game with two rushing touchdowns. And playing much of the season, as Gary has pointed out, with a dislocated elbow. And one team had the fourth down stop, and the other team had the fourth down penalty. And so for the tenth. Still fourth down. Consecutive year, Navy will win. The clock does stop on the delay of game. And a penalty of five yards to be marked off.
and the midshipmen only have a half hour ride to get home. The cadets are back on the buses six and a half or seven to go back to West Point. And here is the punt. Fair catch taken with one second to go. Bit of a surprise to see the fair catch. Just a last note about West Point Vern to put this all in perspective. In the 10 years, the last decade in our mission in Afghanistan and Iraq, 84 West Point graduates have given their life for our country. Mm. Timeout Navy with two seconds to go. They did put one second back on the clock. Time now for the Napa Auto Parts play of the game. We take you back to the fourth and seventh stop by Warren and the call from Bob Sosi of the Navy Radio Network. Brown comes in motion. Steelman inside fake. He keeps. He's buried in the backfield. Matt Warwick shoots through a gap and takes him for a loss. Navy with a fourth down stop. And Navy will win in large part because of the defensive talents of number 51. Now you want to talk about a prevent defense? Look at this. They might gain some yards though. Yeah, they could. Why don't they just run? They don't have to throw it. <laughs> Steelman lets it fly. Caught. But game over. Game over. traditions in all of college football about to take place here and let's go down to Tracy coach we saw the emotion that you just displayed hugging teach right there why is it so emotional this win I had to suspend him it's like disciplining your son uh, it was a hard decision but uh, I love that kid I love these young men and also just very happy for him congratulations enjoy it that suspension occurred after a painful loss to the Air Force when Alex Teach uh, ignored tradition and left the field before the singing of the alma maters told us yesterday he walked into the locker room all by himself and said oh this is not a good thing and he was then suspended for one game the next game thus the explanation by Ken Niamatololo to Tracy now then the tradition. The vanquished go before their colleagues. their places in front of the midshipmen army this year had a motto of sing second they didn't get to do it they had to sing first
27 21 the final in the 112th playing of Army Navy. First time ever, if you can imagine, in the nation's capital. For Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from our nation's capital. The final score, 27-21. Chris Proctor led the way with 97 yards on the ground.